The following program contains adult content and may not be suitable for some children. I guess it really depends on how mature your children are. Not that they're not mature, I'm not saying that. I mean, geez, when I was a kid, I didn't have a clue. The first time I saw a Playboy magazine, I turned beet red. I still do sometimes. I didn't have sex until I was 26. I wonder if this is the part of the show they were talking about with the adult content. I hope not. I'd like to see a lot more than just this. I mean, you know. I see the director's walking in here, and he's carrying a big stick. Hey, Jack, what's with the stick? Oh. <laughs> this program has some violence in it, too. for that warm reception, a warm reception. It's been... Hi, Mom. Hey, all right. Well, told you we need a cover charge. We need a cover charge. I, it's been an interesting week in town. You know our governor, Gary Locke, is on that wonderful homecoming trip to China that he's on. He arrived there with a great fanfare. They put him up in the best hotel. Little lack of communication because they gave him the bat suite, which, you know, they just... <laughs> We heard you were the governor with bats. No, 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 I got it all wrong. We don't want the bats. And so both he and Mona are visiting the villages where their families came from, and they're drawing huge crowds. It looks like Gary's having some fun at the same time every day. We've, we've seen the uh, photos in the newspaper, like we've got this one here. There he is. He's flying a kite on Tiananmen Square. And the other one, that's him uh, climbing the Great Wall of China. Now, I have to say that in all the tourist photos from China, that that's the only one I've ever seen that someone is actually climbing the wall. So I'd say, go, Gary. <laughs> Looks like he's having a blast over there. He did do a lot of other interesting things over there that the papers didn't have room for. We managed to get some photos. Like, here he is just showing everybody how American cowboys ride. It's Governor Buffalo Locke. It's good. He took time to wrestle an elephant, which is a, it's an old Chinese custom. So culture, he did a ballet class. Very nice, very nice. And look, he also won, he won the Mr. Beijing contest while he was there, just in time. And he found some time to relax on the beach while Mona was visiting uh, her ancestors. Mona off visiting her village at the time there, so. Looks like the governor having lots of fun over there. Uh, now, in political news a little closer to home, have you heard about what's going on in Kashmir, Washington? That's the home of the Applets and Cotlets factory. <laughs> See, I know you guys did hear about this. The Applets and Cotlet folks say that they're going to move out of town, take the factory away, unless the city officials agree to have all the town signs say, home of Applets and Cotlets, and they have to rename the two main streets, Applets Way and Cotlets Way. Which, is, you see what is happening in this country, you know, this corporate arm twisting, they figured out, you know, that sports teams can do it, car factories, although, I have to say, I, I, I wouldn't think that Applets and Cotlets leaving is such a threat. I mean, it's, I... <laughs> They said, you know, if the, <laughs> we're gonna go, if the city didn't come around, that they would go to Leavenworth, is what they said. <laughs> Which is just one more reason to find that town a little more disturbing. You know what I mean? It's, like, <laughs> it's the slogan in Leavenworth gonna be, you know, you came for the bizarre German facades, <laughs> but you'll stay for the icky, squishy candy. <laughs> I don't know. 
obviously found a winner. I'm really sad to say this stuff is catching on. Uh, I just learned that Dick's hamburger chain in Seattle is now starting to make threats. They say they're going to move out of town if they. And, uh, yeah, no, that is a terrible to No, that's right. Seattle does not want to end up dickless. We don't want that. They say. Obviously, they have a lot of leverage, and they say they're going to move out of town unless they, we rename Broadway, which is home in those most popular Dick's restaurant. Broadway will have to be renamed Dick Street. <laughs> Boy, they're way ahead of me on that one, aren't they? Yeah. Won't even have to finish that joke. Anyway, you know, informally called that anyway. It doesn't matter. Anyway, and if, yo, oh, and he did it. Anyway, if that's not enough, there's trouble at the zoo. Have you heard about this? The folks at the Woodland Park Zoo say that they have to get, they have to relocate one of their male gorillas because he's behaving very badly. I believe we have some video of that gorilla. I think. Okay, I'm coming in now. You be a good boy. Where are you? Hey! I just think he's, you know, a little over-affectionate is the problem. I send him down to Atlanta and he can hang out with Ivan. This is where, sort of where the gorillas from this area go. Anyway, we've got a great show tonight. We've got a lot of comedy, but we're not neglecting the fine arts. You know, you don't have to turn to PBS because the arts will always have a home at Almost Live. Take a look. First, there was River Dance, the ultimate celebration of Irish culture. Then came Green River Dance, the ultimate celebration of South King County culture. Next was the dazzling Lord of the Dance, starring that sweaty sensation, Michael Flatley. Now, fresh from the cake soaked pastures of Kent, comes Lord of the Green River Dance. Starring that riveting machinist from Boeing's Auburn plant, Daryl Flatley. Thrilling! says Mud Flap Monthly. <laughs> Spectacular, says Chainsaw Digest. of the Seattle Times raves, check out the package on Daryl Flatley. <laughs> Sensuous and seductive, it's busting box office records. Now in its sixth month at the Auburn Center for the Performing Arts, Lord of the Green River Dance must end soon. the power, the passion, the perspiration of Daryl Flatley as Lord of the Green River Dance. Yeah, nice menu, huh? Yeah, very nice. Yeah. A lot of fish uh, items on this menu now. Very nice. I love fish. Oh. Yeah. yeah, you know, I went fishing last weekend, and boy, were those lunkers biting. Oh, they sure were. I caught me a 10-pounder. <laughs> <laughs> 10 pounds? That's pretty good there. Of course, uh, I caught a 13-pounder. 13? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. What kind of boat you got now uh, there, Jim? Oh, uh, one of those 20-foot uh, Boston whalers. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. You know, I had one of those, but I uh, traded it in for my 30-foot uh, Chris Craft. <sighs> yeah, well, that's good. Nice. I, I just kind of 
fish off the dock, pretty much. Oh, so. man, that one. It's too bad. Not everybody can have a boat. The one that is uh, located in front of my new waterfront home. <laughs> Welcome, uh, gentlemen. I'm Robert. I'll be your waiter. What can I get for you? All right, Robert. Believe I'll have the chicken cordon bleu. <laughs> Let me see here. I think I'll go with the, oh, I don't know, filet mignon. <sighs> All right, then, in that case, Robert, why don't you bring me the lobster? <laughs> okay. You know, the reason why I can order the filet mignon is because my doctor says my cholesterol, it's amazingly low. Well, now, of course, I jog 12 miles every day, so it really doesn't matter what I eat. <laughs> I can bench 300 pounds. 325. 375. <laughs> when I was in Las Vegas, I won 400. 450. $600. <laughs> uh, here's a box of Kleenex. It looks like it, you guys could use that. I don't know what that's all about. You know, but it reminds me. Yeah. When I was in high school, I had the flu. And it was, I mean, it was bad. And the next day was the state basketball championship. Oh, man. Ouch. Long story short, yeah. hit the winning bucket. <laughs> wow. Wow. It yeah. was uh, in high school, you say? Yeah. Yeah, well, when I was playing defensive guard on the uh, college football team. <laughs> college? College. College, wow. Yeah. Our defensive tackle right before a major game. Busted his arm. Oh, just yeah. one? Yeah, just one, but he was out of it, so uh, I played both positions. <laughs> yeah. You win the game? Oh, yeah! Oh. <sighs> I remember one time when I was racing hydros. <laughs> Hydroplanes? Unlimited. <laughs> yeah, I was on the last lap of the Gold Cup. I think it was the Gold Cup. Spent so many, I can't remember. Anyway, I flipped the boat. Broke my leg in two places, but I still beat Hanauer's ass by three lengths. Wow. <coughs> uh, He's passed out. Uh, does anyone know CPR? Yeah, hey, please. Wait, get out of here. Let me handle this. I'm a doctor. Yeah, I saved about four people last week. Yeah. yeah. I was going to be a doctor. Couldn't take the cut in salary. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I healed myself. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Good evening. This is The Late Report. Well, a new Washington state law gives school officials more power to suspend gang members. Officials say this should give the suspended students more time to commit crimes. <laughs> St. Thomas Episcopal Church in Medina held their annual Blessing of the Animals last Sunday. The event coincided with Auburn's annual Blessing of the Camaros. <laughs> In a recent poll, Seattle was rated the sixth highest city for exports. The number one export, Sonics players. <laughs> Earlier... Earlier this week, the White House released several dozen videotapes of informal coffees that Republicans say show President Clinton soliciting campaign donations in the White House itself. Uh, we have a copy of that tape so you can draw your own conclusions. All right, now, sir, remember, everybody's just here to have some coffee. Coffee. That's our story. Got you. How are you doing? Just slip it right in my hand there. That's right. How about you? Thank you very much. Hey, what you got there? I've got some pictures of Benjamin Franklin for you. Oh, he's one of my favorites. Got some of Grant, too, if you'd like. Oh, yeah. Hey, Phil, uh, the president's going to need a new pair of pants. They got kind of stretched out when that Canadian guy gave him all those pennies. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Visa and MasterCard and Discover and American Express, too. That's a beautiful handbag. Thank you. That's a beautiful handbag. Thanks. All right, everybody, welcome to the Oval Office. Now, if you just all settle down into your chairs there. There you go. Let everything slide right into the seat cushions there. Yeah. 
Kind of hard to tell, somewhat inconclusive. Make up your own mind. Uh, Seattle's Burke Museum was outbid by Chicago's Field Museum of Natural History for the most complete Tyrannosaurus Rex fossil yet discovered. In place of the would-be dinosaur bones, the Burke Museum will have a new photo exhibit called Pictures of Better Stuff at Other Museums. <laughs> A Kingdom employee who tried to tape the seagulls in their locker room with a hidden video camera accidentally ejected the tape before uh, trying to record them. He's not alone, however, as a study shows that one out of four video voyeurs has suffered from premature ejection. <laughs> Representative Jim McDermott says that overdue campaign finance reports were sent from a hotel in Australia two months ago and are apparently lost in the mail. This has caused some legislators to question the current policy of mailing important government documents from obscure hotels in continents on the other side of the planet. <laughs> well, the Seattle mayoral race is beginning to heat up and while Almost Live maintains a position of political neutrality, we wanted to provide equal time to both candidates to express themselves. Therefore, we have invited both the Paul Schell and Charlie Chong campaigns to submit their own jokes about the opposing candidate. We present these jokes in a new segment called Forum. Good evening and welcome to Forum. Joining me on my left is Karen Hall. And Karen, you're with the Chong campaign? No, Paul Schell. Really? Oh, well, yes, of course. <laughs> it's just that I uh, <clears throat> assumed. Ne never mind. Uh, and on my right is Jane Mellon, <laughs> who apparently is with the Charlie Chong campaign. Yes. The campaigns will deliver their jokes about their opponents alternately. Miss Mellon won the toss, so she will deliver the first joke. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is a good one. Okay. Um, how many Paul Shells does it take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> I don't know. It depends on whether it's at his home in Seattle or the fancy vacation house up on Woodby Island, because he's got a lot of money, you know? <laughs> money. <laughs> Very good. Ms. Hall, response. Thank you. How long does it take Charlie Chong to screw in a light bulb? I don't know. How long? Chong doesn't screw in a light bulb. He just bitches and moans about how dark everything is and never does anything about it. <laughs> Cute. Miss Mellon. Okay, okay. What did the golden goose say to Paul Shell when she met him on the street? What? She said, how does it feel to be so much richer than your constituents that you can't really relate to their problems? Problems. <laughs> okay, excuse me, why did Charlie Chong cross the road? I don't know. To buy a handgun that doesn't require a 30-day waiting period or a background check or safety training certificates. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Shell. Shell who? Shellfish have lots of diseases. <laughs> Get it? Diseases? Okay, what did the chicken say to Charlie Chong? I don't know. Said, you're a big, dumb, oh. stupid head. Oh. Stupid head. Charlie Chong, Charlie Chong, oh, Charlie Chong, Charlie Chong, Charlie Chong, Charlie Chong, Charlie Chong, Charlie Miss Hall, Miss Mellon, thank you. This has been Forum. <laughs> Wow, thank you. <clears throat> Finally, the WSU Athletic Department is sending colorful fall leaves to sports writers to remind them to vote for quarterback Ryan Leaf for the Heisman Trophy. They hope the tactic will be more successful than the last such attempt when in 1973 they lobbied for player Carl Letterbaum. <laughs> this has been The Late Report. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Or, What's Week This Week? Brought to you by Seattle's heavy metal community. Lame! October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but they won't let you volunteer to do breast exams. Lame! It's lame. It's lame. lame! Lame! Every time you memorize the names of the Foo Fighters, another band member quits. Lame! You go to see the full Monty, and halfway through, you realize you're enjoying a film about male strippers. Lame! The bass player in your band has to schedule practice around his kid's soccer game. Vilely lame. Dog lame. Uncompromisingly lame. Swimming in a stinking sea of lamalities. 
You don't get to experience road rage because you can't afford a car, so you have to settle for bus rage. Lame, 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 lame. You just realized that Garth Brooks songs speak to you in a way that White Snake never did. Lame, Dolly Way, usable. Lame. This has been the Lame List. <laughs> That's all the time we have this week. Bye-bye. We'll see you next week.